I think we're live. I know we're live, never mind. <clears throat> Welcome to The Millennial Mind, a new show with an indefinite sub description. I'm your host, Nicole Alexandra. And today we have Bretman Rock, who I coerced into coming here. Bretman, still a senior in high school, is a member of track, a newborn uncle, and a highly skilled whistler. But what most people know him for is his presence on social media as an independent makeup artist. With over 7.7 .7 million followers on Instagram, Bretman has captivated an audience ranging from middle schoolers who loiter at Pearl Ridge all day to the parents of those middle schoolers to the distant relatives of those parents residing on the mainland. In fact, most users of social media have probably been exposed to at least one of many of Bretman's thought-provoking, nasally strenuous expressions, which you can see displayed behind me. While Bretman's skills in crafting looks are significant, strong enough to induce heart murmurs, his success as a figure on social media can be attributed to his potent personality. Welcome, Bretman. Oh, wow. I'm speechless. Thank you so much for that introduction, Nicole. Thank you. I've never been introduced like that before. Me neither. <laughs> I've never introduced. And thank you for having me. Thank you for um, Coercing you. giving me an excuse to not go to school today. It's if you want, I can write you like a slip. <gasps> yes, that would be really nice. Thank you. But I'm only missing PE, so. Oh. It's gonna be gross. <laughs> yeah. So tell us. How did you get your name? Um, my dad got my name from two different wrestlers. Actually, it's like Bretman Rock is my actual born name. So Bretman came from the Brett the Hitman heart, and the Rock comes from the Rock. So Bretman Rock, and he thought I was gonna be like a wrestler, which um, almost. Which I'm almost kind of a wrestler. I run track, so yeah, that's kind of like I like people ask me all the time, like why do you do sports? Because my parents they thought I was gonna be a wrestler, but. They never signed me up for wrestling, which I'm really thankful for. So. But what you do do are videos. <laughs> yes, I do. I'm sorry, do I said videos. That. Yes. I'm sorry. So how long have you been making videos? Um, you? I've made like, like I've been always been making videos since like I was on Facebook. But they're all like, like private now, and they're all disgusting. And then My when I started making it as a career for like Snapchat, that was in like sophomore year. Of this year, so. And before, like, you became Bretman Rock. Yes. There was definitely a difference in the videos. Can you sort of explain, like, your original intent with videos? Is it just to have fun? Or? Yeah. Well, um, yeah, they were kind of like super thought provoking, like you said. Like, um, I wasn't woke, I guess, because I didn't really know like anything about like the outside world so I was just kind of like making videos for fun like without even knowing that it could like offend people out there but mm -hmm. I wasn't it, and like to be honest I wasn't never really like expect I never really expected or I never really wanted to become famous like I posted snap like the video the old videos that I posted are snapchat videos and the reason why I posted them on Instagram is because I had a friend that was like oh I was trying to show my uncle your video but it's like gone on snapchat now so I posted them on Instagram which my account was always private because I didn't want anyone to see. And then she was like, I can't show my uncle still because it's private. So I went off private. And then I guess once I click, yes, I'm sure, that's when my life kind of like turned around, I guess. So how do you feel about people who start using social media with the intent of becoming famous? I know there's a lot of people who don't have as much followers yeah. as you. And they sort of fall into that slim tea or detox tea mm -hmm. advertising. And it's become sort of a joke. Like you see celebrities just copy and paste the message from their sponsor. Yeah. And everyone knows it's a fake message. Yeah. I'm not gonna deny like it I've done like slim teas and all that yeah. stuff because because I I didn't know any better. Like I didn't have managers back then that would tell me like you're not even drinking it <laughs> or like or whatever like that. And like you said, like social media is becoming such a like desired job, especially for like the millennials. And I think what they need to like no, it's like social media is not all that. It's just like any other job out there. There are like goods and bads. That's, there's pros and cons with working for social media. And um, they need to prepare themselves for that. And I think a lot of them, like they think just because I see people all the time, like dropping out of school just because they have like a following. And it's like, girl, you're not going to graduate because you have 
a few thousand followers, like really. But yeah, it's honestly, if I had like one word of advice for people who are looking into social media as like their job or career, it's that it's not handed to you. It's you have to work for it. And sometimes like you just kind of have to have fun with it. Because if you see social media as your job, then it's not fun. It's really not. And when you do things that you enjoy, everything just flows better. And yeah, everything just flows into place. And I, and I'm still trying to figure out social media for honestly, because um, my managers tell me like things all the time about like, don't do this, don't do that. But then I'm like, but if I don't do that, I'm not Bretman Rock. When did you get a manager? Um, I got a man. Well, I had two different like agencies or managers. Um, one was when I hit like 1.4 million, but they sucked at. Sucked, um, and then I kind of just dropped them, and I, and then I found a new manager who is more involved in the beauty industry, who knows more about like the beauty industry, which is um, the side I'm trying to. Would you to ever be. like trust your mom to do it? Honestly, no. She doesn't even speak English, but she, <laughs> <laughs> like those business calls would just be a um, hot mess. But no, but yeah, I'm like, I, my the time where I got a serious manager would have to be like last year around this time last year. So as your following sort of grew, did you notice a change in your content, like listening to your managers or avoiding oh, yes, certain things? Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, my gosh. I used to say, like, words wh that I can't say now or ever even before that I didn't really know about. Like, for example, like the N-word, I used to, like, drop that all the time without even knowing, like, like how it affects other people in a way. Because in Hawaii, like, no one... I'm not saying no one's woke, but like no one really like like tells people not to like even like for in Campbell, for example, that tree. If you go around the school asking like, "What is this tree called?" They will all say, "Tree." The tree. And so yeah, we know about that. When we, if you go to Campbell, you know about that. And like I guess like that's kind of why like my mentality with it was like I didn't know. I'm not using it as an excuse, but I should have known better, and I now I know better, and I'm, I deleted all those videos since because I feel I felt disgusting, honestly, for saying those things. But um, yeah, like you live and you grow, and that's what like life is all about. And I think social media taught me, a, I guess, a few things about life. So, how does your persona as an entertainer and like a, a figure on mm -hmm. social media differ from how you use social media to interact with friends? Oh my gosh. Mm. Well, social media, I don't really like use social media to interact with my friends, honestly, because I'm not, girl, I'm not even allowed to follow like my friends on social media and like family. I'm not even allowed to like follow my sister because my cousin once, he got like a, a kick message saying like, tell Bretman to follow me or I'll like shoot you or something. I know where you go and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, that's kind of like crossing the line. Let me just like not follow any friends, any family. So, um, so yeah, but. Um, yeah, I don't really like talk to like my friends on social media. I don't really like ever like I don't even stalk my friends on social media. You're a guardian. Yeah, you're protecting the people. Yeah, I'm protecting. My Thank kids. you for not following me. Yeah, I I do have like a private account where I follow like friends, but I don't. Oh, I, that doesn't exist. Yeah, that does not exist. No. It's not real. <laughs> but you have millions of followers on yes. social media, multiple platforms. Mm -hmm. You're big enough that social media has funded you, so you get to travel and like. Yes. What is that about? Like. Um. Well, first of all, I hate traveling. My manager knows. Every time I have like a trip, I always have to make it like the shortest as I can. So if it's like a two-day event, I will fly there the day of and fly the day that it ends. So I would fly there for two days because I hate traveling and I hate the mainland so much because like. The people are like very different from the people here, yeah. like especially in LA where I've been countless of times. Like people out there, they really not everyone, of course, but everyone thinks they're famous up there, and it's just a competition of like who has more followers, who has more money. It's like, dude, like we're all in the same level at the end of the day. We're all working through our phones. Like you're just just because you have seven million followers and someone doesn't. Does, that does not make them less of a person than you right. are. Like it's not. But do you feel that one day you'll ever be forced out of Hawaii like to pursue more opportunities? Oh my god, yes. Oh my gosh. I'm like constantly battling like like 
my parents and my agency about like because even my mom she thinks like more money in the mainland but I'm not happy there like even just being there for two days I'm not happy like I always have like mental breakdowns there's no green and there's no blue yeah exactly so I mean I I mean I, I get the fact that like that's where money is but who needs money if you're like happy with like people that you're so like sorry I'm bad, honestly. and like people think like Hawaii is like expensive but LA is expensive like <laughs> let's talk about traffic yes traffic I and like I feel like the lanes in there are so like skinny and I like driving big cars so I could never drive there because I would just like bang everyone like I would just like side swipe everyone and like right yeah I mean that's not a bad thing yeah and I like living here because everyone that already seen me have seen me already and like I think I feel like I'm getting to a point where like everyone's kind of like getting old with me already so I like that because like before people you can relax to, here. I could relax now like I could like be less w worried about like people freaking out about me because everyone knows I live in Ebba Beach like want to show off your shirt for a bit yes I got this at Rasta headquarters shout out to my Rasta girls yeah. NY Pahu NY Pahu yes <laughs> So, as a citizen of Eva Beach, yes. do you feel that there is some hostility in the community between, um, between? us and the world? Um, I don't know. Eva Beach is a very interesting town, honestly, because I feel like it's a little bit of everything. There is a lot of people to begin with, but there's, like, so many, like, there's, like, the hood side and then there's like the rich people side and then there's like middle class it's just really weird but in terms of things to do it's mostly residential yeah do you feel that Eva beach has shaped you in some way yes oh my god yes definitely i feel like the people in Eva beach are more um lenient when it comes to like respecting like each other's stuff because I feel like I don't even ever lock my house. Right. Because I trust, like, Eva Beach, like... You can't trust them with mangoes, though. People true. will go into your yard yes. and steal your shit. My, I always... I'm kind of, like, guilty for that because I always... Like, my uncle made this stick that went through my neighbor's yard and we just picked out mangoes from them. Right. So I can definitely rela relate, but we've never, like, tried to, like... Yeah, so... But we've never really tried to um, steal from them. So yeah. But don't steal... Never. Mangoes, because we're going to go on break. Yes. Aloha, this is your host Beatrice Cantelmo. Uh, come and join us every Friday at 4 o'clock uh, on Perspectives of Global Justice. Aloha! How you doing there, lassies and laddies? This is Angus McTech here on Think Tech Hawaii, and on my favorite show, Hibachi Talk with my good old buddies Gordo the Texada and Andrew the Security Guy. Please join us every Monday. No, it's Friday. Every Friday from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii. And you can also find us on YouTube. Hibachi Talk. Aloha! I'm Carol Mon Lee, and I want to welcome you to our newest series called Education Matters, where we will explore education-related topics that touch everyone, not just formal programs in K-12 and higher education, but also broader issues and information that affect our community. Oh, oh yeah, I just... Hi. I was lied to just now, but we're back. We are back. Thank you and so much. So. A lot of things have contributed to this persona that you portray on social media, such yes. as stealing of mangoes, the dryness of Eva Beach, oh, man. a lot of things. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with Brett Minrock, here's a quick clip to show you his charm. Yes. Shot, take one. <laughs> so what was your inspiration for that video? Um, well, I actually got the dildo when I went to LA. I got it for as a joke to get for my mom for her birthday because I was going to put it in her bag. But I wanted to keep it because it's like... 
because it has a suction thingy and like it's like the right girth and like I was like, wow, it's like perfect. So I just kept it's it. It's very cute. Thank you. It is. I, I still have it around. I never like use it for what it's intended for. I feel like yeah, just like you, the dildo has a wide skill set, and because of yes. the suction cup and the portability, mm -hmm. you could when you're traveling yes. you can bring it with you you can throw it onto the wall and not to mention like the pleasure that it gives people right so i feel like i give the same pleasure as well. just like you the dildo it doesn't have to yes. be used for its intended purpose viewers just see it and they mm -hmm. get a sense of joy within them and i think yeah. it's really admirable wow. so, i could actually see myself as a dildo now like if i had like a second life and, yeah like, in the heaven and god is like what you want to be i'd be like a dildo for my second life, please. You know. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. So I would say it's like my spirit animal, I guess. So there's many alternative realities that are going on for you. Yeah. Or that could go on for you. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned earlier that, um, so as a makeup artist, personal social media, there's sort of expectancy for you to act a certain way. Yeah. And I don't mean that by refraining from saying certain words or like mm -hmm. saying offensive things but there's definitely that expectancy for you to be entertaining yeah. and all the time dildo dildos. yeah it's kind of i don't know i it's it's kind of stressful in a way sometimes like when people like shove a camera in your face and in, it's on record they expect you to be like eh -eh, like mm, and all that but Sometimes I'm not in the mood and I'm like, girl, I'm like a human being. Like, girl, if I'm sick, I'm not going to be like in your camera, like taking pictures all the time. But I really feel like people just need to realize that the people that they see on their phones and in their TV screens are people too. They have their good days and their bads. And just like you, of course, but I feel like you just need to just understand them as human beings and not as superstars or like not as like your friend. So because of that, do you ever feel disconnected from yourself? Like, is the line between Kind of, yes. I are? always feel like I'm playing a character almost. I always kind of, like, and you feel trapped sometimes, like, especially when you're, like, in events where, like, you just want to, like, sit down and, like, enjoy yourself. But, like, there's ca cameras everywhere and, like, every beauty guru wants a picture. And I'm like, girl. I know damn well you're gonna face soon that before you upload it where we don't look like that like it's just i don't know it's oh i just always feel like i'm playing a character right so is the line between who you are and who you need to be dissolved or do you try to keep it separate i'm really trying i and i feel like my viewers know that i'm really trying because um especially this past month i've been like having a social media detox mm. where I post less and I want to focus more on school because I kind of like value school a lot like like I always say you don't die with like your followers and money you die with the education that you have so I really like advocate like going to school but besides that like yeah I'm just like chilling I just how does your family trying. play into your whole social media thing I guess like, that's kind of like a reason why I want to stay here again, like my family and like the people because like they keep me grounded and they keep me like, I feel like if I went in LA, I would just turn crazy in, into another like low class budget, like Kardashian. Mm. And if I stay here, I'd just be able to like help my family and like just enjoy life. like And like away from like the real, real, real world, right. which is the mainland. So I know um, you've had like threats sent to your cousin for being yes, involved with you thre like threats towards me as well right towards you mm -hmm. but i noticed also like your sister directly has gained quite a bit of followers uh -huh. from your association yes so as a sibling and you growing in social media has she gotten less or more irritating um i th well she moved out recently oh. so i would say she's gotten less irritating but um with social media, like, she's been helping me with it and stuff. So, so it's brought you closer? I guess it really did because I have a makeup page that she runs and all the profit from that. I'm not going to lie and be like, they all go to her, but some goes to me. <laughs> but <laughs> so a part of the profit from Redmond's Vanity goes to my sister and her baby. That's right, you're a newborn uncle. Yes, I'm a newborn uncle, yes. Uh, it's been fun, very stressful, but they grow so fast, so I'm, like, chilling. 
And do you feel that making friends has changed at all, or? Um, I feel like my standards for like making friends have definitely like been stepped up a notch. Like I feel like I was more friendlier before, but now I'm just like really picky and choosy with like my friends. Cause I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not saying like everyone's like after me and like my money, but you have to be careful sometimes. And like, I've had friends that, fr not friends, but like I've had people like who associated with them with me for the intentions of like, like using me for like certain stuff. Like a ladder. Like a ladder, yes. So how many people actually get to know you or do you feel you meet someone and they just act like they already do. I really strongly believe in like, um, like horoscopes and stuff. What's your time? So, um, I'm a Leo, and like I, I really like look like, I feel like I attract like certain, um, um, signs, and like Aries. yes, and Gemini's and Scorpios, like other alphas oh. and stuff. So yeah, I really like kind of like just pick my friends from like, it's kind of bad, but like I kind of like pick my friends from like. Have you ever friends. like disliked someone and then avoided them and told them it was because of their sign? Um, no, but I, I usually like, like dislike them after like, like I would realize someone's like a Aquarius and then I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna give you a shot. And I was like, oh, that's why I gave you, oh, whatever. So, <laughs> how many people actually know that you can whistle. Um, I actually tell everyone this, that I went to a whistling competition in second grade and that's why I whistle so good. But yeah, I didn't win, of course, but I went into a whistling contest in second grade. And that's how we met. We met at Chocolate Beach, whistling to whistling. Mariah Carey. Do you think there could have been an alternate reality where because of your personality, you still uh -huh. became big on social media, but instead of makeup, whistling. you were like a whistling guru? Honestly, I've thought about like coming out as a whistler, but <laughs> not yet. I feel like it's very tough in this day and age to come out as a whistler. Yeah, it's kind of like yodeling. Like it's no one really makes it out anymore. Hey, I <laughs> actually... Do you yodel? I yodel. So it's funny that you Do you want to do a collab? We can. Come back at the next time. We'll do a collab. So yeah. A song. Do you know any next producers? Next episode, we'll do a collab. Huh? Do you know any producers? For Yodel? Yeah. For Yodelers? Um, I really don't know, but we can contact like MTV and stuff like that. For like their very first like boy and girl group, Yodelers. So there's MTVs. definitely a change in times going yeah. on. Yeah. I really feel like we're the ones that would kind of like bring it back, like Yodel and Whistling. We should... We should close the show. You yodel to um, Mariah Carey, Mariah and I always yodel to Mariah Carey. Is there a particular song that's yodel worthy? What can you think of? What matches the season? Honey. Honey. I don't know that song. <laughs> Is that a real song? I don't know. OK, back to the interview. Back to the interview. <laughs> Is there any other questions you want to ask? No. Wow. Okay, let me ask you some questions. All right. Um, so why did you choose like um, that you wanted to do like multimedia? Like, why do you want to host? So I can do this and tell you to not ask me that. True. Because Would as you a host, ever? as a host, I have the authority to deny your questions. Wow. So would you ever, after this interview, would you ever like consider working for social media or doing social media as a job or a career? I definitely want to stay off the radar, but at the same time, if you have like a really bad home project you want done, I will come through for you with a camera wow. and like really bad props and I can help you make I will happen. hit you up. I really need help on like my YouTube. So as you can see, like did you see my YouTube videos? They all suck. The editing sucked. Up. Do you yeah. edit it yourself? I don't anymore. I oh wait actually I made my I hired my cousin. I made him like do all these research. His name is Mark Pesca but um <laughs> He edit, Mark yes. Pesca is your cousin. Mark Pesca is my cousin. I remember when he first came to the U.S. Yes. 
So yeah, Mark Pesca is my cousin, and he edits my videos, and I just pay him like two hundred to three hundred dollars per video. Right. So it's so hard. Else. I can't sit there and like listen to my voice for like two hours, and like it's horrible. So how much of like the process? Do you do yourself? Is it like very solo? You got um, all your well, I used to, I used to be more solo, and then like I was like I'm making enough money where like I could hire or help like get help from my cousins or some people. So I just kind of like utilize like my friends and my friends and family to work for me. <laughs> like yeah, so yeah. My do you ever see um, Cleo in the f future as like a potential assistant? Uh, uh, not assistant, but I would like train her. Like I would be her like guardian to like social media if she wants to do it. But I'm not gonna like feed her into social media because I don't think you could raise someone through social media. I feel like it would be so bad. But again, it's a new generation, and like, why would it be yeah, bad? I don't know. Like, imagine being one and being exposed to like social media your whole life. And I'm sure like, Cleo's already exposed to it, but I don't ever want her to think that social media is all she has. Right. So uh, as you can see now in current events, um, you may have noticed DJ Khaled has been has an Instagram account for his son, Asad. Yeah. And it's very, very immersive for mm -hmm. his son, I believe. He's I feel so too. So. Always posting. I don't know how he... He's very <laughs> skilled for his age. Yes. I mean, he missed his father and flew on a private jet to go meet True. him. True studio and he's already in the studio so there's definitely that risk mm -hmm. of instead of baptizing your baby into <laughs> this world kind of put them under and like yeah keep them there and it's different for him because he's always on DJ Khaled's Snapchat and they see him so often I feel like I try to feature Cleo as least as I can so people like don't like because like even with just that one video where I posted Cleo with her neck like that, oh. people were ch threatening me to call like human child services, and I'm like, girl, it's like she's fine, like her neck is intact. Well, but whatever. I believe you on the neck, and I just wanted to say, thank you for showing up. I mean, thank you for no having one, me. No one has ever came through for me like you have, Anak. I feel <laughs> that. You know, we're. I would bring you back to the province. That's Thank how I feel. Thank you so much. Yes. And to end this show, let's whistle. Okay. And yodel for a bit. What are we whistling and yodeling to? 